Good morning everyone, it's Phil. Now, every pilot has the same dream and for many of us it's to fly the ultimate aeroplane, the Spitfire. And thanks to my wonderful brother Chris and uh, my sister-in-law Lisa, they very kindly gave me a present of a flight in a Spitfire four years ago and it was amazing and this is my story. So we all arrived at Biggin Hill Airfield down in Kent which of course was one of the main Battle of Britain uh, fighter command airfields uh, in the Second World War and uh, so already there was quite an atmosphere when you arrived there. And the first thing is you have a briefing um, uh, and uh, there's quite a lot to learn before you can go flying in a Spitfire. So they show you a video for 20 minutes and they kit you out with a flying suit and gloves. Uh, you wear a helmet and a parachute, um, but the helmet you put on as you get into the aeroplane. So. Uh, the video tells you all about the risks of flying in a very old warplane like a Spitfire and the sort of maintenance requirements. And um, they then, the staff there then prepare you for the flight by talking you through procedures if you had a problem. So, for example, if, uh, if you have uh, an engine failure or you have a fire or some sort of problem, then you need to know how to get out the aeroplane and try and survive. So they teach you um, firstly the strapping in procedure. So when you get into the Spitfire, you're properly strapped in sitting on your parachute. And then they teach you an arc procedure, which is basically the arc movement of your arm in the cockpit. So you start down here on the right hand side and you lower the seat down and then you would release the canopy up here and then you undo a lever that releases the hatch door so that you can then bail out. So that concentrates the mind before you go flying. And they teach you uh, about how things might be in a forced landing and uh, obviously if you do get to have to bail out then the command is jump, jump, jump from the uh, commander in the seat in front of you. Uh, and you have uh, a static line and a, and a D ring on your parachute. So when you've jumped out, you uh, then uh, open your parachute if the static line hasn't already done that for you. Uh, making sure, of course, that you don't whack into the tailplane of the aeroplane on the way out. So there's a bit to learn and it, uh, it does focus your mind and uh, you do start to think, crikey, this is something a bit serious. So then you, uh, you wander out to the aeroplane with the ground crew and um, I then had a chat with my pilot um, who was a, a lovely guy called Don Sigourney, who's a, a very well-known Spitfire pilot. And I explained my fly flying background that I'd been flying since I was 17 so he very kindly said, well, look, I, he had to do the takeoff and the actual landing. But he said the moment the aeroplane is off the ground and just before it gets back on the ground, he would take over and do those parts of the flight. But otherwise, he let me do all the flying, which was just out of this world. So you, uh, you go out to the aeroplane and they show you how to get strapped in and uh, put the helmet on that has the communications in it and they set the um, cameras uh, running for you um, and uh, off you go on your flight. So because there were cameras I can show you parts of the flight and you'll get a feel for what it's like.
arrived at the airfield, the weather was pretty bad. It was uh, a, a front going through and there was a lot of low cloud and rain. And we didn't think that my flight would take place. But as the briefing was happening and we were getting ready, the uh, weather decided to play ball and the clouds started to part and the uh, cloud base lifted a bit. And by the time I was in the aeroplane, um, there were holes uh, in the clouds and uh, there were uh, still quite a lot of clouds, quite low level, um, but there was a lot of holes with it as well. So uh, that meant that we could fly and that not only that, we could play with the little clouds and fly around them and through them as we departed out over Kent. took me uh, all the way through uh, Kent, not all the way down to the White Cliffs of Dover, but I had a good long flight and um, I just so enjoyed flying the aeroplane and thinking of what it meant. Um, when you look down that elliptical wing, it just is so evocative. And um, one, one thing that was of interest is that because these aeroplanes are so valuable and the engines are, um, are quite delicate now and parts of them are very hard to get so they, they really baby the engines and look after the aeroplane so they don't allow the aeroplanes to be flown with what's called a high manifold pressure so the aeroplane can't produce as much power as it would have done in combat and what that means is that you can uh, fly uh, some manoeuvres that are in a horizontal plane so you can do tight turns 
um, but you can't do any vertical maneuvers so no loops um, nothing that they would have been using in combat to fight each other um, so that somewhat restricted the flight but nevertheless it was still just an awesome thing to to do and the sound of that Merlin engine up front um, and uh, to look down that wing in a tight turn at the Kent fields beneath me uh, was just a, a fabulous thing that I'll always remember. When I was back on the ground everyone asked me what was the highlight of the flight and I think you can probably guess that the one thing everyone wants to do in a Spitfire is to do a victory roll and this is what it's like. Fantastic. Thank you. How was that sort? Oh, it's just fantastic. It's incredible. Joyous. Joyous. <laughs> this is the flight certificate that I received uh, after my flight and I'll just uh, read the caption at the bottom for you. It, it reads MJ627 was built at Castle Bromwich in 1943 
as a Mark 9 and entered service with 441 Squadron of the Royal Canadian Air Force, serving with the RAF. Its first operational sortie was flown in September 44 in Belgium, and in service MJ627 carried the squadron code letters of 9G and was painted with the invasion stripes, which is how it's flown today. On the 27th of September 44, just two days after entering service, MJ627 destroyed a Messerschmitt ME109 over Arnhem while being flown by pilot officer Sidney Bregman. So I feel really humbled to think that I've flown in that aeroplane that was part of preserving the freedom of the free world. And uh, I take my hat off to pilot officer Bregman um, for the courage and bravery and determination that he showed in flying that aeroplane and uh, doing what he had to do. It was a fantastic day and I am so grateful for having done it. So when I was at Biggin Hill, um, you get shown around the hangars and there's several Spitfires there uh, being restored uh, in different states of uh, you know, preparedness. Uh, and one aeroplane I spotted outside the hangar was a lovely uh, American military version of the Piper Cub, the L4. And uh, they told me that that's uh, for the engineers to use. Um, and uh, they also use it for uh, dropping people's ashes. So uh, some people obviously ask that uh, the ashes are dropped over a certain place and that's often the aeroplane they use to do it in. Um, the other thing that they do now, which they didn't do when I was flying the Spitfire, is that they have a, a large uh, aeroplane that can hold a, about half a dozen people so that families can go up into the air when their loved one is flying in the Spitfire and they can watch them uh, close up um, as the, uh, the loved one is enjoying their flight. Uh, so that's quite a nice touch. Uh, obviously it's not cheap but uh, it's still quite something to be able to do. And uh, to see a Spitfire from the air is a very, very rare privilege. In uh, making this video, I wanted to just check a couple of my um, facts and thoughts about the procedure when you arrive. So I gave the company at Biggin Hill a call uh, and uh, they're at the Heritage Hangar. Um, and uh, if you go on to the website flyerspitfire.com uh, they can uh, book you in a flight or do a tour of the hangars um, and I had a very interesting chat with them and at the end of the chat they told me that um, I'd forgotten that next week next Thursday is the 100th birthday of Captain Tom who as we all know is doing the, the walking around his garden for charity and raising an incredible amount. And uh, they said that they've been asked to do a fly past of their Spitfires um, over Tom's house on his birthday next Thursday, which I think is fantastic. And uh, they've said that they've invited him to go and fly with them. So we'll see if that uh, happens one, one day. That would be a uh, a brilliant thing to, to have happen. So uh, as we come towards a close, uh, I just thought I'd show you uh, another classic car that I bought not long ago. Uh, and this is a little video showing my son Ben driving it up to the Midlands where he and his brother Sam are going to use it over the next couple of summers. Um, and uh, given the uh, content of this video, I dare say the more informed amongst you can probably guess what car it is. So just at the end here, I just thought that I would like to dedicate this video to my fantastic brother, Chris, uh, who's always supported me 
through my 64 years um, and to his uh, ever caring and helpful wife Lisa uh, and to thank them again publicly for having provided me with something that means a lot to me as a pilot um, and it was a great day out and I'll always remember it and so a big thank you to them. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this video, it's a bit of a special one um, and uh, I hope to see you next time on Phil's Fun for Fogies. Stay safe, take care, bye bye.